and coming up next here, I'll have my interview with our new guest here on Who's Next on the X right after this quick break. Another day, we're on in 20. Northwest Missouri State University's four student media outlets, KNWT Television, KZLX LPFM, the Northwest Missourian, and Tower Yearbook have been ranked among the top in the nation for the College Media Association Pinnacle Awards. The Northwest Student Media Department takes pride in ensuring students are up to date on the latest technology, equipment, industry secrets, and offers profession-based learning experiences from day one. To support Northwest Student Media, check out our content on all of our platforms. In a land born of conflict, with a line between divine and demonic a blurred. Five legendary heroes must save the day. Or not. Hey, I don't know what it's called. I come from the Mars, so I, d I don't know what you're saying. Come watch Soap and Saloons on Wednesday at noon. was good y'all from the breakdown set hey welcome to nerd central your one-stop shop for anything movies tv shows and even the latest celebrity news from the newest releases and even your local film festival we will have it all right here we're here to uncover the easter eggs that you might have missed and even the secret plot lines that you might not have picked up on right here we'll uncover the mysteries on nerd central launching wednesdays at six on knwt tv I'm doing here making TikToks and it's not about what I do it's about what we do here so we start with storyboarding the content we want to create for our clients it could be anyone from small businesses nonprofits and organizations both on campus and in the Maryville community we write we film we edit we create and then we wait so if you're someone who thinks you need us we are KNWT creative services oh man I gotta go Alrighty. hey uh where do you go every Saturday? Oh, I go film my show. You know, the show I host with KNWT, where we, you know, do something new with a guest from around campus each week. It kind of pertains to their job or activities that they do. Yeah, sorry, man, I, I don't get it. I don't know, man, it's loosely related. Hey, welcome back to Loosely Related. I'm your host, Jackson Weddle, and this is your host. Tower Yearbook, we are a dedicated staff of photographers, designers, copywriters, and practicum students. Our staff is a student-led, student-run media outlet, producing a book with over 300 pages. Be sure to pop out at any of our portrait or distribution events. So stay tuned to our social media to see what's up. <laughs>
The news that matters most is the news that hits close to home. Maryville or Bearcat News, whatever the story, we're there for you. It could be about you, school, or your safety. Whatever it is, we got you covered. You need to know what's going on in the Northwest and Maryville community, and this is a place to find it all out. This is our home too, and we're in this together. We, we are Channel 8, 8 News, covering, covering for you. you. Hello, and welcome to Gen 2, your favorite place for all things gaming and rarely tech-related. We have a large assortment of packs for you to choose from, so choose wisely, Traveler. You can watch Gen 2 every Tuesday at 6 p.m. KZLX is a student-run radio station where Northwest students have complete freedom during their shifts. KZLX also hosts many radio shows such as Nermageddon, Revive, Day-to-Day -Day Picks, and more. To learn more, visit kzlxfm.com. Nice job on the analysis of the game last week. Oh, thanks! Come on, Jason, you're not a football player. Tosses it toward the end zone, pass cut, touchdown for Northwest Missouri State. It's Alexander coming up with a kick. Now that's a football player. Make sure you check out Bearcat Update every Monday at 6 on KNWT TV on YouTube. We got sports news, scores, behind the scenes, and anything to do with Northwest Missouri State University here in Titletown. Check us out. Unlike other organizations on and around campus, here the students do it all. KNWT is a student run and student produced television station. To support this content, you can go to our YouTube channel at KNWT Channel 8 and watch the latest shows or even enjoy blasts from the past. homecoming parade we're happy to be here with you today uh, whether that be at the parade want to know a little more information about what's going on or if you're just sitting at home so my name is Skylar Stamps and I'm Tyrell Childress and we are so so excited to be a part of this tradition you know Skylar this tradition has been going on since 1924 that means we have almost hit a millennia when it comes to the amount of time that we've been running this homecoming parade and I just I'm happy to be a part of it this is our second time hosting now so I'm just I'm just thrilled we must have done all right last year <laughs> I, I guess we also did a good enough I guess for them to want us to come back for sure and we've also had some other traditions that we do here at northwest of course yesterday was walkout day so one of the big traditions here at northwest for the students so the friday of homecoming we don't mm -hmm. have to go to class so i i know that's a pretty popular tradition among <laughs> us students oh yeah i mean hey we're we're definitely going to take a day <laughs> off that's for sure and you can even see all the way up since monday we've been seeing a lot of almost teasers for the homecoming parade coming out whether it be the banners that we have in the Union, the chalk that we've laid down around campus and things like that. And of course, our canned food drive where we actually get to stack up things and really show some pride with that as well and give a little bit back to others. Definitely. And this parade, there's already people lined up. I know we start here in about 19 minutes until the first float comes down 4th uh, Street here. So 
People are already lined up. The streets are getting full, so we should be in for a really good morning. Yeah, we can take a peek in the streets, and you can see that it is very, very filled since we last checked. We also have the trailer over here where our judges are going to be, so we'll really get a front row seat to give you guys the best explanation we can over kind of overseeing with everybody doing their little skits and such. Yep. And so... Before we get started with the parade, we have some pre-program highlights and some packs that we want to show you. So our first one is going to be about the Bearcat Marching Band and the banners that hang outside of the Union. Absolutely. Those are kind of our little teasers to kind of get you guys excited for kind of what we have in store later on, right? And watch we'll you get to see that Bearcat Marching Band a little bit later. But first, we'll go ahead and give you the history of it coming up right now. Director of Athletic Bands, Kathleen Strickland, oversees the marching band, which includes around 160 students. She said the preparation for homecoming week isn't that different from a typical week for the band, but they put in a lot of hours on Saturday, the day of the parade and the football game. Regular game day starts at 10 a.m., but their day starts earlier for the parade. For homecoming, the parade steps off at 9 a.m., so they have to be here at 8.30 a.m., and it's usually cold. Um, and then we march uphill, mostly in the parade, then they come back around again, um, take off their marching band hats, and they're in full uniform for all this stuff. Then they go straight in the stadium for a rehearsal, then they leave the stadium to go play for the high school band kids at their award ceremony, the ones that participated in the homecoming parade. Then they leave that to start a normal game day. Junior instrumental music education major and trumpet section leader Paige Roadwald said the band has many different traditions leading up to homecoming weekend. During the week, the band participated in different spirit days like dressing up as their favorite meme and pajama day. She said that despite the longer days, the band has fun and gets excited to be out in front of a crowd. Parade is one of the most interactions that we have with students instead of um, just family members, which I think a lot of uh, people go to at the football game, whereas the parade is a lot with students, which is really, really nice. Whether or not it is homecoming weekend, Strickland said the energy from the band is high and people can see it. I was at High V this morning and a really, really nice woman stopped me in the parking lot and said, are you the band director? I said, yes, I am. And she went on and on about what we add to the game day atmosphere. The b, b will perform in the Northwest Homecoming Parade starting at 9 a.m. October 21st. The parade will start on College Avenue, proceed down 4th Street, and end on Main Street. Northwest Missouri State University's theme for the annual homecoming celebration for 2023 is Welcome to the Ville, a jungle theme. Northwest Homecoming Week dates back to 1924 with a week filled of activities that showcase the theme leading up to the homecoming football game, including hanging of the banners outside of the J.W. Jones Student Union. These banners were hung by student organizations to kick off the start of homecoming week on Sunday, October 15th. Blake Leisure, Northwest Homecoming Chair for Banner, Donation Creation, and Philanthropy talks about his experience in this role and what banner means to participating organizations. Yeah, so banner is just a small part of my uh, what I do. Uh, I'm actually in charge of banner philanthropy and um, donation creation. Um, but for banner, uh, let's see. So it's a big part of uh, the week of homecoming. Um, basically, organizations that participate do like to uh, um, like put in their own money and resources into it, and um, and then they get a cash prize at the end. Um, but also, it goes towards supremacy points, so that. Um, that goes so at the end of the week of homecoming all that uh all the events that people participate in um they get supremacy points for each event and then at, at the end all of it will accumulate and the person with the most supremacy points wins a plaque and i guess bragging rights as well so um i think it, it's really a, an expression of uh them, like themselves or not not themselves as a person but themselves as the organization um it's really fun to do the competitiveness part because a lot of the banners do a um, us versus them with Northwest versus whoever we're playing against for the football game. Um, so this year it was the uh, Pitt State Gorillas. And so we would, um, for Teak, because I, uh, I had the most uh, conversations with them, but this year they did like a, um, it was Bobby the Bearcat versus um, 
the Pitt State Gorillas, and uh, it was like a Mortal Kombat theme. So like at the top, it was like that, and then versus through the like a diagonal through the whole thing, and then the gorilla was at the bottom, and it's it's just a fun way to express themselves. These banners are displayed the entire week, adding a sense of homecoming and school pride to the campus. A panel of Northwest employees and community members judge the banners and select winners, which will be announced October 25th, 2023. Ryan Caswell and Sydney Lowry, thank you so much for those packs about the Bearcat Marching Band and, of course, those banners that are up in the Union. Again, great traditions that we have here at Northwest, and we'll get to see a little more about those and really get to see those people shine as the parade starts to come down the line. And the Bearcat Marching Band, they've been busy this week. They've been preparing oh, yes. for the game as well as waking up the president at 345 in the morning on walkout day. That's a tradition that we have here at Northwest. Yes, so. it's a tradition, and I love seeing the freshmen get to experience that for the first time. <laughs> and then you're like, what? Is, is this something that happens? Everyone like, yeah, yep. it is. But we kind of love it. We do kind of love it. So that's totally okay with us. And then the theme for this year's homecoming parade is Bearcats Got Game. So be on the mm -hmm. lookout. Um, a lot of things have been jungle themed this uh, week. So if you want to be an at-home judge, you're more than welcome to do so. Let us know your feedback. <laughs> yes, because, man, a lot of the jungle themes, we get to see Bobby going up against gorillas recently, especially with our variety show. A lot of people really played into that. And, of course, you're going to be hearing a ton of songs in regarding to the jungle and just, you know, animals as well. We want to get also give a huge shout out to everyone that helped make this parade possible. Um, our homecoming committee, they do a lot to put on the parade, yes. the variety show, everything that goes on during homecoming week. It's a lot of moving parts, but they make it seem pretty easy. Absolutely. And we also got to give a big shout out to KNWT, the people bringing you this broadcast right now. The variety of shows that we've been putting on this year have been absolutely incredible. And you can totally check those out by going to the YouTube channel that you're, well, you're currently on. Yeah, and they've put on a lot of work for us uh, just to be able to put on this production throughout the week. Yesterday, they had set up from, I believe, 9 a.m. to noon, and then many of the camera operators, people behind the scenes, they were here at 5.30 to 6 a.m. this morning just so we can bring this production to you guys yes. so you can feel like you're here with us in the bill. Absolutely. So now we have a bit more time. So let's go ahead and look into a few more of our packs and some of the content that we're really bringing with that. Up next, we just have a few other things lined up, and then we'll go ahead and have an interview with Wiley Ray, our KZLX representative, to kind of go over what the game actually has in store. So enjoy this pack about the dancing clowns and jalopy of Tau Kappa Epsilon. Hi, my name is Sal Bonadonna. I'm a junior here at Tau Kappa Epsilon, and I'm this year's dancing clown head. So basically my role in the dance alongside with the other five guys is just uh, kind of like a chorus member, I guess is the best way to put it. So I'm just dancing alongside with them. Outside of the dance, um, I was in charge of actually compiling the group of guys that were gonna be involved in the dance. Um, and then I got to reach out to some other people to get it all put together. I feel like the guys here at Teak are always willing to get involved in anything and everything, just a really great group of guys. So as soon as I asked, I saw a bunch of hands raised and then I asked who really wants to do it and then those numbers got lowered and then we finally had our six guys. We meet just once a week on Tuesdays from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. The uh, reason for that is because during homecoming we get pretty busy and a lot of our guys are involved in a lot of other stuff. So we just thought for a minute long dance just once a week for one hour would get us to where we need to be. I think we're going to do really great uh, no matter what the result is in the end. I can speak for everyone when I say that we're all just having fun. So no matter what, it's going to be a really great time and it's going to go super well. Thanks to our amazing choreographer, Jaylee Patel. Hi, my name is Jaylee Patel and I'm a senior here at Northwest. I'm the Teeks choreographer for Dancing Clowns. The theme this year is finding love in the jungle because we all know it's hard out here. When it comes to planning the dance, I actually just got a text from Sal and instantly when he asked me to do Dancing Clowns, I already had an idea. I knew everyone would do something obviously with the jungle theme, but I knew that I, we should go a different route. And so coming up with this bachelor theme was super exciting. And I think it really only took me a day to kind of choreograph and come up with the idea as well as the choreography. So the inspiration actually kind of came about the same moment that Sal texted me. I was scrolling on TikTok and was watching clips of the old Bachelorette 
and I thought how iconic would it be for the boys to be bachelors but in the wild and as animals. So that's kind of where it came about and it just grew from there. If I had the opportunity to choreograph for Dancing Clowns again, I absolutely would, but it would only be for Teak. Today I'm at the Ta Kappa Epsilon house on 555 West Line Street with Alpha Delta Pi and Ta Kappa Epsilon as they work tirelessly on their jalopy float. Now you might be asking yourself, what's a jalopy? Well, I have somebody here named Gabe Sullivan of Ta Kappa Epsilon to tell you exactly what that is. Follow me and let's go check out their jalopy float, yeah? So float is pretty similar to jalopy, but float is gonna be uh, bigger than jalopy. It's gonna be more of like a trailer that's pulled around by another vehicle, uh, which allows for that bigger size, whereas jalopy has to be a smaller vehicle, and jalopy is decorating the actual vehicle itself rather than something that's being pulled, um, and that's what makes it a little bit smaller. Um, so jalopy is definitely a little bit easier when it comes to uh, manpower and stuff because you're not making it quite as large. Looking at this beautiful monstrosity, it doesn't take much thought to realize that they put quite a bit of work into this thing. These papers, called pomps, have all been individually wrapped by hand as well as glued to the golf cart. Now we ask them just how long they've worked on this thing. One of the things that makes jalopy so difficult is just how much time it really takes up. Uh, so we started with uh, purchasing, um, we had 15,000 sheets of paper in the different colors that we would need. And then each of those pieces of paper had to be uh, pomped by hand, which is turning it into a little uh, cone type shape that can be stuck in a chicken wire, which is gonna be wrapping our vehicle. So we've chosen to use a golf cart, which we've wrapped in chicken wire. And then each of those pomps that we've created um, it, all 15,000 of them have to be put into the chicken wire in specific orders to create an overall image. To wrap it all up, we take a deeper dive into the design that Teak and 80 Pi have selected and what the overall theme of Homecoming actually is. For our jalopy, we are doing a helicopter. Um, and so the theme for Homecoming this year is in the jungle or just jungle overall. And so um, in there's like excursions and stuff and then we will both write like our fraternity and sororities like names out in pomps on the helicopter as well. Ta Kappa Epsilon and Alpha Delta Pi will continue to work vigorously up until October 21st where they will show their jalopy float in the homecoming parade. For Stories That Matter to You, this has been Dominic Ocampo with Channel 8 News. Thanks for tuning in. Now with us this morning, we have Wiley Ray, who is our KZLX representative here with us this morning to kind of discuss the game at hand today, Northwest versus Pittsburgh State. So what do you got for us, Wiley? You know, you're really looking at a big matchup today. Pitt State, number two in the nation, and then number one in MIAA. To note, they're 7-0, undefeated on the season. Seven of those wins have came from the MIAA conference. Looking at the flip side of things to the Bearcats, Bearcats are currently sitting at a record of four wins, three losses one win out of conference so they're sitting three and three in conference play currently fifth in the miaa so when you look at the records it really looks like a david versus goliath matchup here between the the gorillas and the bearcats yeah it does and i think that this is a different bearcat team that we're seeing today that we saw in the beginning of the season of course mike hoency going out with the injury um, in the first home game of the year. Of course, we all know how that game turned out. Uh, first loss in at home in many years. But then they've kind of picked it up these past two games uh, versus Missouri Western last week and then Central Oklahoma the previous week before that. I think they've really seen this team kind of regroup, take a restart, and... I think Mike Hoensey is connecting with his wide receivers more. Um, I was down at the Missouri Western game last week, and it just seemed like the whole team was clicking a little better. Yeah, no doubt about that one, Skyler. When you look at the energy the Bearcats have had within the last two weeks compared to even at the beginning of the season, that tough loss against Ferris State at home really put them into gear and really, you know, I wouldn't say humble, but knocked them into the gear where it's like, okay, we need to start pressing on the gas and we really need to start making some big plays happen. And when you look at that, you know, big win at rival Mo West and then a big win at home against Central Oklahoma, Bearcats have really brought the energy up for this week's matchup. Yeah, and I think that's also going to play a huge factor in this game is being here in Bearcat Stadium in Maryville. It's homecoming. The 
Excitement is at an all-time high. Number two is coming into town. You know it's going to be a great crowd. Everyone's going to be into the game, and I think that might rack some havoc on the Gorillas. Yeah, when you look at when you look into this series between the Bearcats and the Gorillas, Northwest leads this series all-time 29-26, which, fun fact, is the closest of any matchup Northwest has had with any of their opponents. Wow. Going into being here at the Ville, but Northwest has a 10 to eight series lead over the Gorillas. And the last time Northwest lost mm -hmm. on homecoming was to the Gorillas in 2014, 35 to 17. So a lot on the line, but the Bearcats have the experience. They have the energy to get things done here today. So what does Northwest need to do to be able to have a chance, be in this game, and even come out with a win? So when you look at Pittsburgh State and you look at their offense, they are a high velocity offense who likes to run the ball and when running doesn't work they like to throw the ball northwest comes into this with the third best defense in the nation just mm -hmm. just to look at total offense for pitt state they are ranked 22nd in the nation Northwest's defense is total at is topped at 60th overall so when you really look at that on paper it's like they're close but overall when you look at these two play wise it'll be a very good game northwest back-to-back -back weeks have allowed less than 100 yards rushing they've given up on defense. So looking at that, Northwest defense can step up big today and halt that gorilla offensive rush. I think so as well. Um, anytime this year the Northwest has went up against a very good rushing team, Mo West, they're kind of known for their rush. And uh, last year or last weekend, the Bearcats limited them to negative 17 yards of rushing. So we're hoping we can see some of that today. <laughs> yeah, not only that, when you look at this Pitt State offense, they do not turn the ball over much. Over the total of seven games this season, four total interceptions and three total fumbles, only two of which were lost. So when you look at that, this team is very disciplined on not wanting to give the ball up. But on the other hand, they are not disciplined with the laundry on the field, with the flags, the penalties, 41 total penalties on the season, averaging 61 yards a game penalty wise and a total of 427 yards on penalties so when you look at that the Bearcats really got they really have to take advantage of those penalties especially if they're on offense and Pitt State you know that's a whole football that's a, almost a whole football length of a field and so mm -hmm. the Northwest has got to got to be able to bounce bounce to those opportunities so Wiley I guess wrapping things up here are there any specific score predictions that you really see coming up you know when you really look at this game you look at both teams and they're both high octane offenses but with this one it's going to be a defensive battle and I got the Bearcats 24 21 all right well I guess we're gonna have to see then how that goes right but go Cats. Go Cats. Mm -hmm. Well, we hear the sirens in the background, so we know what that means. The homecoming parade is just getting started. It is officially 9 o'clock, so we want to thank you, Wiley, for joining us here on the broadcast thank today. Thank you, Skyler, and thank you, Tyrell. Really? So as the parade comes down here, we'll try and give you a little bit of a description of what's going on, who it is, and just give you a little bit of a play-by-play -play for the parade. Yeah. You can hear the band playing as well. So, of course, the fire trucks are coming. The band is coming as well. And you can tell, too, everyone is standing up. So they know what they're looking for. It's always an exciting time. All the fraternities, sororities, I know one of my friends, she was working on a float until midnight last night, so some last minute preparations for them as well. So that is, that is a lot of hard work that goes into this. 
And of course, we get started with the ROTC. We have a Show Me Gold program here at Northwest, so it's great that students get that experience as well as getting to serve our country as well. So mm -hmm. they're followed by the Maryville Fire Department. Of course, everyone's standing on their feet, hats off, honoring our flag, honoring our veterans. They're, of course, the reason that we're here, able to do this today. So, of course, the Maryville Fire Department got the parade started, followed by some bands coming up the street. They'll be on your cameras shortly. I always love seeing all the green, like, the green waves that line the road over here, right? And it is. We have a great, um, great crowd on hand today. I know that the all of Forest Street is lined with just Bearcat fans, Bearcat alumni. This is a great time for everyone to come back to Maryville and just get to experience homecoming, relive their old college days. And of course we have our Grand Marshals coming down the street. Our new president in his first year, Dr. Lance Tatum and his wife. Of course we have the family of the year coming by right behind them. And right behind that, we have our homecoming royalty. We have Jacob Waters holding the sign there as their king, Darren Ross, is leading them in the charge. Closely followed behind is the Bearcat Steppers, our dance team here at Northwest Missouri State. And then behind them, you saw a pack on them earlier, but the Bearcat Marching Band playing, of course, the Bearcat Fight Song.
pride of Northwest, the Bearcat Marching Band. They always get everyone hyped for game day and inside the crowd as well. They have been up probably earlier than we actually have setting up this. So to make sure they have a pep in their step and they still got to play at the game later. So they have so much energy. Followed by them is our Bearcat cheerleaders. I see some KNWT folk out there. I do too, and I believe that is Bobby Bearcat with them as well. We also have our color guard joined along with them as well. Then up next we have the Maryville Spoof Hounds Marching Band. Maryville just had an amazing game last night. The Maryville Spoof Hounds did. We've almost winning 76 points, yes. They have been exceptional this year. The high school band's been busy too, playing at the game last night, waking up early to be here for the parade. It's great to see all the dedication, not just Northwest and the university puts into it, but also the whole community as well. You see all the businesses decorated for the parade, all the community members pitching in, the high school coming, performing in the parade. I know I didn't have that much dedication in high school, Skyler, <laughs> so to see them doing that. Next up on your screen, you see the paper mache heads. Looks like Alpha Sigma Alpha. It looks like they're going for a bit of a dinosaur kind of vibe, but I also see, is that a moon? It kind of looks like it, Tyrell. I love how the moon has a spotter. <laughs> The fraternities and sororities here in Northwest, they put in a lot of time and effort throughout this week doing jalopy, paper mache heads, their floats, their skits, and then of course their skits during the variety show as well. So a lot of, you know, tip your cap to them for all the hard work that they put on for our university and homecoming. The big trucks you see rolling through, that's the United Electric providing electricity throughout Maryville and the Northwest Campus.
you can also see along the sides of the roads, guy there, tons of kids coming out, grabbing the candy, running right back. Yeah, it's great to see all these kids out here this morning and maybe even future Bearcats once they grow up. Mm -hmm. Maybe add a couple more 10 years onto their life and they'll be here standing in our position. Yeah. And we'll be watching the parade. And then we'll <laughs> be watching as alumni. The, uh, the all around ages that we just see lined up here, everyone's still united for the same cause. It really shows the Northwest community. Once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat, right? Once a Bearcat, always a Bearcat. see the United Fiber Electric truck, or internet truck rather. Fiber fast internet for the Maryville community. They have been a great community in the Northwest area ever since coming in here. Looks like Tri Sigma is about to perform their skit, so we'll take a watch and a listen. Tri-Sig had some moves there. Yes, like, they did. They could actually, actually dance. Of course, everyone that was part of the variety show could also dance as well, but they, they actually had it. band that you hear right now, that's the North Nottoway Marching Band. And they're the Mustangs, which isn't exactly a jungle animal, but to be fair, neither is a lion. We saw a lot of that during the variety show. Performing in front of the judges now is the Alpha Sigma Alpha skit. We'll take a listen and a watch.
Great performance there by Alpha Sigma Alpha. And talk about those flips. I can see you doing that, Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do a flip to save my life. <laughs> if you want to see me down at Mosaic, <laughs> that that That's that, that kid. <laughs> Now the float that you're seeing on your screen, looks like that's Alpha Sigma Alpha and Sig Ep. Explore the Ville, conquer, conquer the jungle. Looks like they have Bobby in a bit of like a Jeep Explorer. And just think about how much time probably went into that float. A lot. Mm. All of those are little tiny pieces of paper that were pumped together. It shows All a lot of dedication. All the form float to go down the parade. Up next, we have our Horace Mann Laboratory School and the Lead Center. They're one of the best opportunities we have here on campus for a lot of reasons why Bearcats and hopefully future Bearcats are a part of our campus. Yeah, education majors really get hands-on experience within their first month here at Northwest, observing in classrooms, getting that hands-on experience. Career ready, day one here at Northwest. And we absolutely push that agenda and they are doing a fantastic job there in Horace Mann. And almost like they they brought it looks like they brought almost everybody. I think they loaded up the whole elementary and packed them on a float. Yeah, <laughs> they had them draw out some kind of signs too. Some folks walking behind. Want to make sure everyone get involved in the homecoming parade, the homecoming festivities. It's a great time for everybody. Yeah, that's Northwest for you. And then, as we were just talking, if I do decide to do a flip, there's Mosaic Medical Center. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Skyler. They're the ones going, making sure that us college students, whenever we have our <laughs> boo-boos or we choose to actually do those flips, <laughs> that we're okay. They're a great resource here in Maryville. Always feel safe. Know that they have your back no matter what. Up next, we have the Diabetes Awareness Lions Club. And it looks like we have some figures from the game Jumanji, a game that I will never go out of my way to play, but <laughs> hey, those movies are hilarious. I'd be a little scared to play that too. And it seems they brought the whole pack, whether it be both the animals and the dice itself. Try Sigma. There are paper mache heads walking down. You got the dice, the Jumanji package. You've got it all. It also makes me wonder, how do they pick who's who? Like, who says, I'm going to be the dice block, you know? You know, I wonder if it's volunteer. It might be a little bit delegated, too. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, we have the Miss Black and Gold. And a lot of our contestants that are coming down the line here. Jaylee Patel taking the lead here, waving to the crowds. And that Bobby is hanging. And then our next float that you see on your screen, 
That comes from Five Mu and AGR. Another float. On the back it says Cats Gone Wild. Welcome to the jungle, Tyrell. Yeah. Seems like Bobby's enjoying himself on there. And coming up, we have the Stanberry High School and their band decked out in that yellow and black. Seems like we're having more than just land vehicles today. We have a bit of a bit of a boat going on here. The SS Bobby with ASA and Sigta. Our next skit is going to be performed by AKL. We'll listen in, see what they have to offer for us. AKL coming in with that Tarzan skit there. Always one of my favorite Disney movies. You know, Tyrell, I've never seen it. You've never seen Tarzan? <laughs> hey, we might have to change that after the Bearcat game then. Movie night. Movie night, <laughs> all right. Then we have some representing some student media here, KZLX, our student radio station at Northwest. Tyrell, you might know a little something about them. I sure do. As program manager of KZLX, I'm in charge of making sure that all of them sound great on that radio station. And they have been making some major improvements and growing as a station. So totally check them out on 106.7. That was Five Sigma Kappa. Man, they have some moves. I saw a flip in there. They're yeah. flying like Rio. It seems like they taught Dante DiStefano how to fly. <laughs> He's already a pretty powerful man, so we could be giving him more tools, I guess. Up next, we have Miss Whitney's School of Dance, another amazing community within Maryville.
Wow, it almost looks like they brought the entire school <laughs> yeah. with them as well. Great to see the youth getting involved in the community, get get involved in something whenever they're young. Maybe they'll we'll see them on the Bearcat Steppers whenever they're older. Hey, absolutely. The best part is seeing those Bearcat Steppers work hand in hand with Miss Whitney's School of Dance to really show those kids and show their upbringing and growing up. A lot of mentorship that goes on with that. Looks like we have the School of Ag coming in with their full oat. Of course, it is being pulled by a tractor because, well, Ozzy's uh, School of Ag has got plenty of those. <laughs> this is the first time I think we're seeing Bobby really chilling in there. Actually, I take it back. Looks like he's working. There's Fiseek and Teak with their paper mache heads. And then the Fairfax marching band. I love their pink feathers. They just, they accent that green color perfectly. I Man, if we're gonna add any color to the Northwest, you know, range of colors, I'd be okay with that. And of course, October Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so Great to have that tribute in the parade as well. That was Phi Mew showing off their moves.
on your screen. We'll take a listen to the South Nottaway Marching Band. Check out that frog, man. Looks like it even works. I saw the tongue going up. I'll and down. say, yeah, and it was speeding past. And I believe this is our Student Activities Council. They're the ones putting on some of the major organizations and big things that happen here in Northwest, like our grocery bingo. Yesterday, there were hundreds of students out uh, in a line to get a free t-shirt at 8 a.m. yesterday. I was one of them. I did get one. They look great. So great organization to have on campus. Yes, they are amazing. Also next up, the red and white band that you're seeing is from Tarkio High School. It's a big band. It is a much bigger band than some of the ones we have here. Let's go ahead and give them a listen. Try Sig, A.K. and Pike over here with a pretty impressive float there with Temple Run. That's pretty awesome. I love when they make references to things that I haven't even thought about in a long time, but Temple Run would have been perfect for uh -huh. this theme of Bearcats Got Game. On your screen, the Bearcats and Blazers. They're kind of our student section leaders here on game days and in the football stands. And they're they representing Planet Sub and the student body, which can be found in the J.W. Jones Student Union.
Up here we have the Nottaway County 4-H. And what do we have going on on here, Skyler? Man, Baker Chiropractic has the whole set up today. I was trying to figure out what these white things with people just walking in them is, but I think it's a spine. I think it is a spine too, and that spine is grooving. <laughs> <laughs> they've the got dude. a golf cart. They've got about 20 people in a spine costume. They've got a trailer with big speakers on it. They went all out for this Yes. Parade. Baker Chiropractic found on the south side of Maryville. That is, that's a lot of preparation. They put in a lot of work for that and they just said, follow the leader and it seems to be working here. <laughs> super, super creative. probably the most creative one I've seen so far, Tyrell. Absolutely. You know, I never thought I'd see a spine just do the Cupid shuffle. Well, I didn't either. But I hope uh, mine doesn't start doing that. Man, I don't know. I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I'm starting to feel it now. Are you feeling something, Tyrell? Hey, you know, if I if I if I gotta dance, gotta dance man, I gotta on. dance. <laughs> One thing we'll also make note of too is that they cannot see the other person next to them when they do this. <laughs> this is pretty impressive. So they've, the shows, they've definitely practiced. But so has every single person in this parade have put in the time and work for this one specific moment to make a look at the best they possibly can. This makes me want to go check out Baker Chiropractic. I was to say, <laughs> chiropractor appointment might be in order. Up next, we have CCH or the Christian Campus House. They have worship on Tuesday nights at 7.04 p.m. And the reason why they always put things on the 04 is because they're actually located on 4th Street. So they always put things on the 04. I didn't know that, Tyrell. 
Honestly, I only learned that recently, but <laughs> I, I, I played it off like I was like, yeah, I know. Looks like we have a few more paper mache heads coming in, including a Bobby the Bearcat one. Skylar, you think they noticed when we just ran over there and started taking some candy? They no. handed it out. I've thought about it this whole time. Come on, we have Taya's School of Dance with the pink and white. And Sigma Kappa coming in with their float. Sig Cap and Sig Tall. Looks got like Bobby in the, <laughs> let's see, we got a lion, a zebra, elephant maybe on the right. If I'm not mistaken, they might be doing a bit of a parody of Lion King with Bobby holding the football. I and think Bobby's the, the lion. Yeah, and Bobby, <laughs> the animals are bowing down to him. Gotta love their performance there. Also love too that each one of their outfits has something different about it, just slightly, but they all still kind of fit cohesively together. It is, it's interesting to see all the different varieties of uh, costumes and what all the different fraternities and sororities can come up with mm. to fit the, into the Bearcats Got Game theme. They work very hard to, you know, keep it so that it still represents them while still maintaining the theme and give them a bit of individuality with that as well. People honking their horns here are the detailing bros. Behind them, that's the Sigta paper mache heads. Is that a tiger, Skyler? It looks like a tiger. And what is the blue one? You know, I'm not real sure. Maybe someone can leave us a comment telling us what we, <laughs> what we missed with that. I'm not from the jungle, so I wouldn't know. Over here we have the Indian Student Association. They have been also super busy this semester, really getting their name out there. And just that community is so amazing. And they also serve amazing food. They also per took part in the international flag raising ceremony yesterday yes. at the International Flag Plaza. That was really neat seeing all the different countries come dressed in their traditional clothing, raising a new flag for their country. A, home came, a homecoming staple tradition here at Northwest. Yes, absolutely. 
That's one of the best parts to show on tour or show alumni because it will always be different no matter what semester or year you're coming to. And the representation of that and seeing how proud everyone is, that really says something. Those were some serious moves there, weren't they, Skyler? Yes, they were. It was interesting to see their culture, their dance. And that representation is something that I feel like Northwest has really strongly, strongly achieved on our campus. I agree. It looks like we have the North Platte R1 marching band coming up. Let's go ahead and give him a listen. They were loud and proud. The North Platte Marching Band. I believe, so first, you it know, we like had helicopters. Yeah, we had a boat, and now we have a helicopter here. This parade's getting freaky, Skyler.
We had Northwest Dance Company strolling through in the back of the pickup. Looks like our next performers gonna be the Teak. We'll take a listen, see the dance moves of the Tau Kappa Epsilon. Tau Kappa Epsilon here. Teak really showing their pride. The dancing clowns. Great job by Teak. It's good to all see some face makeup in here as well, too. I wonder if one of them was the one to actually, you know, design that. I think I see a little Pikachu in here as well. I don't know if they're native to the jungle as well, <laughs> but. I know they're not native to campus. That's true. <laughs> Probably around the surrounding South Nottoway area. Next up is the SIGEP, Dancing Clowns. Big up. We've been seeing a lot more stunts this homecoming. I guess we that have. They had some good moves. Yeah. That got game. They said we're going to bring that game. Bearcats got game. Fraternities, sororities have game. Skyler seems to like have some yellow jackets coming down the line here. I'm kind of loving the caps as well. That's the Center High School marching band. Looks like they have some dancers in there as well. They brought a full pack of full hives. <laughs> there, you see, you see what you I had did there? You had to do it, didn't you? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for acknowledging. <laughs>
Well, they absolutely killed it. They did, and these bands are also getting judged today by our judges, so not only are they all marching through the parade, but they're getting judged and possibly going for a first place prize as well. Mm -hmm. These fans really bring their all. Coming up, we have that spit and shine, cleaning and detailing. And that, yeah, that truck might need some of that, <laughs> honestly. If they polish that entire truck right in front of these judges, they deserve first place. I agree. Yeah. See how talented they really are. I think they're just here to show what they can do, but man, that'd be kind of impressive. And Alpha Delta Pi is here with the Dora the Explorer theme. Got Swiper the Fox. You got the sentient map. Everyone's here. I like everyone's different spin on things. We had Dora the Explorer. We had the Lion King referenced. Each one of them love taking influence from other things and bringing <laughs> it here. Our Variety Show live stream is also on our Kane WT YouTube page if you want to check that out and see where some of these actual heads or floats actually originate from and the story behind them. There's a lot of good laughs had on Thursday night laughs. It was good to see all the fraternities, sororities, and all the individual performers as well, all the hard work that they put into that, all pay off for the variety show. I don't think there was one bad one. They were, I feel bad, I would feel bad for all the judges having to pick one winner out of that. Right. I feel bad for some of these judges having to pick between <laughs> either these, these bands or these skits and these dancing clowns. I don't even know how you pick. We had the little dining truck come putting through town. Yes. You can find that outside the union sometimes, giving out some free hot dogs, free hamburgers for students. They've been faculty. giving out a lot of free stuff, that is for sure. We have Simitao Gamma coming up here. Let's see, see what, what they, they got have going in store on. for the dancing clowns. Another great performance by Sigta. I saw people flying around. I didn't know what was happening. I was uh, honestly, I, I was more amazed that just thinking about them putting in the time and commitment to do that <laughs> and the amount of trust that goes into something like that. We have Beamer's accessories and glass coming in. Look at those That's some big wheels. wheels. Yeah. Wheels like that, you could take that anywhere. <laughs>
And rounding off our parade here is the Nottoway County Sheriff's Office. Keeping the area of Maryville safe and secure. And of course, this parade as well. So we want to thank you guys for joining in uh, for our live stream today. We hope you enjoyed it as well as just seeing everything, seeing all the hard work, all the fraternities, sororities, all the individual organizations, and the whole campus and community of Maryville put in to make this just a fantastic parade. Uh, we want to thank our production crew as well for all the hard work that they put in yesterday, today, to be able to put this on. Yes, KNWT TV did a phenomenal job. We want to thank Wiley Ray for coming in and representing KZLX. But of course, the festivities are still going on as we have our upcoming Bearcat game. You can check that out on the MIAA streaming network. And if you are planning on coming and haven't gotten your tickets yet, st tickets st are still available online, or you can purchase those at the gate. We want to see you at Bearcat Stadium. We want to pack it. We want to make it loud, make it hard on the gorillas, come out with a Bearcat win. If you do want to re-watch this broadcast, it will be uploaded here within the next 30 or so minutes to our YouTube channel. Come back, rewatch it. Fraternities, sororities, if you want to watch your dances, come on back here, right here on KNWT Channel 8 on YouTube. So for our host, Tyrell Childress, I'm Skylar Stamps. Thanks for watching the 2023 Northwest Missouri State University Homecoming Parade. Go Bearcats!